Elementary OS just had a big release. Version 7.0, codenamed Horus, was released just a couple of days ago. And for those of you that have tried out Elementary OS in the past, this version is not necessarily like some major groundbreaking release with a lot of new features. For the most part, it's bug fixes and some minor tweaks along the way. But if you're a big fan of Elementary OS, you've used it in the past, um, you're going to love the new version 7.0. I'm a big fan of Elementary OS. I really appreciate uh, what the Elementary team has done creating this very aesthetically pleasing look and feel this really polished desktop environment that's very cohesive everything kind of looks like it everything belongs together you know it all works as one which is something not a lot of uh, Linux desktop environments especially can say uh, most of our desktop environments on Linux they look like they're kind of thrown together they're this weird mishmash hodgepodge of various parts that sometimes don't quite look right together but elementary OS is really something different now I've just installed elementary OS here inside a virtual machine just to take a look at this latest release I've got the welcome screen here which I could go through and uh, you know take a look at the little slideshow if I wanted to, I could go ahead and set some settings here. For example, the default theme is this light mode, but I prefer dark mode. So I can go ahead and set that accent color for your applications. Right now, the accent color for all my applications is going to be blue. But if I wanted to change it to something like green or red or purple or, you know, whatever it happens to be, assuming I can click the purple. <laughs> The mouse here is blinking a little bit in the virtual machine. Just know that's a virtual machine problem. Uh, this virtual machine, I, I was struggling finding a good graphics driver here inside Vert Manager. I can tell you, for those of you that are going to try out Elementary OS inside Vert Manager, the QXL driver doesn't work at all. You're just going to get a black screen. The Vert IO driver does work except the mouse cursor never clicks in the right place. It's like the, the mouse cursor that you're seeing on the screen. It's not actually where it's actually at on the screen. It's really weird. So I'm using the VGA driver here, and it actually works, except it does have this annoying feature where the mouse cursor kind of blinks on and off every now and then. But going through the slideshow here, we could go ahead and turn on and off the nightlight feature. If you wanted that kind of feature, I'm going to leave it off for now. Some housekeeping stuff. We could go ahead and turn on automatically deleting downloaded files, old temporary files, and trashed files. By default, the last two are ticked on. Downloaded files is not ticked on by default, so I'm just going to leave the default settings. We could connect our online accounts. If you had some social media accounts and things like that that you wanted to connect, I'm not going to do that inside the VM. Browse the App Center. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. Free and paid apps, and you, of course you have your automatic updates. You may want to turn that on. It's very important that you keep up with your updates on your Linux machines because so many of those updates are important. Security updates, so if you're one of those people that you're very forgetful, you know, you can go weeks or months without updating your machine, be sure to turn on the automatic updates. That way you just don't have to think about it. Let's go ahead and close out the welcome app. One of the features that really stands out with Elementary OS is actually the suite of applications that it ships with. And one of the applications, the App Center, is probably like their crowning achievement. It's what they often talk about the most in release notes. It's this App Center where you can go and get all of your free as well as paid applications, which is really nice. They're offering developers a way to get paid through selling applications for money because it's very hard, especially, uh, especially on Linux sometimes for uh, especially free and open source software developers to actually ask for payment and to get payment for pieces of software so that is nice. I noticed in the release announcement one of the things they've worked on is to make sure that the application scales correctly. You can see that if I scaled this down it actually does uh, respect that sizing. That's very important, especially when you start uh, snapping windows side by side where you're taking up only half the screen or if you're tiling windows, you know, sometimes you can get windows that, that compress down into a very small size. And, and if it doesn't really resize correctly, you know, you can get some, some really wonky stuff going on inside the window. Now let me go ahead and click on one of these applications here to take a look at the the description page. So this page is for the icon browser, which you can see is actually an elementary 
app. You can see that the, the developer is Elementary Incorporated, right? So this is their own custom application, which we could go ahead and install. It is an icon browser, probably to browse the custom Elementary icon set. So that's kind of neat, but you'll notice you've got these screenshots here on these pages. The screenshots sit on top of a, a, a background, a colored background. You see the colored background respects the accent color of your theme. So I set my accent color a minute ago to be purple, and you can see we get the purple background. So that's quite nice as well. If I go back to the home, I can go into uh, settings here. You can see it's going to check for updates. Automatic updates are turned on because I turned it on in the welcome app. And it looks like I've got a notification here as well. Let me click on that. And you can see there's already a couple of updates I could go ahead and take. I, all I need to do is click the button here, update all, and away it goes. And as you can see, I didn't have to enter a sudo password actually to take these updates. That is a really neat feature. Another one of their custom elementary applications that has uh, seen some work is the text editor code. Let me search for code because it is not pinned to the dock here. So code, let's go ahead and open a file. And let's go into the home directory. If I do control F or is it control H for hidden? Control H. And I, I'll do the dot bash RC. You can see this code editor here, right? This is a very nice. I love the syntax highlighting for a plain text editor. This is really cool. And the, the standard key bindings for zooming in and out work as well. Now, one of the cool things with the code text editor is because I chose a dark uh, GTK theme, system theme for my applications, right? The code also uses a dark theme here for uh, syntax coloring, you know, for the text um, color scheme as well. And that is kind of neat because I believe if I had to change the color scheme to a light theme, it could automatically change that in code. Let's try that. If I go into the system settings here and I go to desktop and let's go to appearance, let's change back to the default light theme and now close system settings and let's go back into the code text editor. So again, it's not pinned to the dock. So let me search for it here in the menu system. And you can see now, instead of that dark theme, we now have a light theme for our text editor. I also noticed in the release announcements that some work has been done on their terminal emulator as well for it to also respect light and dark themes. So right now, this is the default theme, but I believe I can play around with the themes here. It says follow system style. Let's turn that on. So if I'm doing a light theme, you can see it's really the same kind of light color scheme that the text editor was using now that I'm you know, using a light GTK theme. But if I go back into, well, not the app center, I wanted the system settings, which is this icon. And I go back into the desktop, into appearance, set to dark mode and now let me hit the super key and as you can see just tapping the super key actually gives you this key binding shortcut menu that comes up which is a really nice feature it lets you know some standard key bindings here in the pantheon desktop environment that uh, elementary os uses this is very similar those of you that use the awesome window manager awesome has had this feature for years where you just hold the super key and a menu comes up to with all of your key bindings. Also, uh, the old Unity desktop environment on Ubuntu had the same feature where you could tap the super key and you would get a, a, a quick little help guide for your keyboard shortcuts. So the super key, just tap the super key. And I was looking to uh, for a key binding to actually open the menu system. And you can see applications menu is super plus space. So let's try that. Super space. And does actually open the menu. Let's open our terminal and now let's see if our color scheme is a dark color scheme. Once again, if I go to system settings, you can see we've set it to follow the system uh, style. So it changed that light terminal color scheme to a dark one based on what we're doing for our application color scheme. That is very cool. The elementary team has also spent some time working on their music player, which I, I believe they have decided to rewrite from scratch and just opening it. It does look quite a bit different from the last version of this music player. You can see the queue is empty. I don't have any music in this VM to play, but I do love the, the design. And it's very simple in design. I like simple tools, right? Uh, I, I like things that it's obvious where everything is, what everything does. 
Now the most important application on any computer these days of course is the web browser and they are using web. <laughs> the browser is actually called web. It's a uh, GNOME web essentially and if I do distro.tube which is my personal website let's just see how things uh, load here and render. Yeah and my website looks like my website. Everything <laughs> looks like it's A-OK -okay here. And let me close that out. Uh, Gnome Web also has the ability for those of you that are used to using Mozilla Firefox on other Linux distributions and you want to import your bookmarks, you can do that. You can import all of your Firefox bookmarks into Web. They also have a desktop email client, which is simply called Mail. And uh, online accounts, we could go ahead and click it and go ahead and enter our information as far as you know your Gmail account or whatever kind of email you want to set up here for the desktop email client. And once it's set up, it kind of resembles Outlook or uh, Geary or MailSpring, any of those particular email clients that typically have like a three columned kind of layout, which is a lot of modern email clients these days kind of mimic the uh, the look and feel of Outlook. And that's kind of what the mail application inside uh, elementary OS mimics as well. I can't show you that unless of course I connect some email accounts. I'm not gonna do that for privacy reasons here on this video. As far as the desktop environment with the panel and the dock and everything, it's the same look and feel. You've got the, the simple dock here at the bottom with most of the applications already pinned to it. Um, you get the applications menu, which you can click on, or once again, super space to enter this thing. Or you can break this down by category. You can search by category, or you can toggle that button on and you can get all the applications in one big list. Of course, it's got a pager here because it's two pages worth of applications. Let's go ahead and check out the file manager here because the file manager is quite attractive. Once again, I'll do control H to make sure I can view all of my hidden files. That's very important for me to turn on. I typically have that turned on in my file managers permanently. It, typically there's a setting somewhere where you can always have your hidden files and folders shown because for me, as much as I play with config files, you know, I'm constantly needing to see these dot files. The file manager is a standard file manager. It's got everything you could possibly want as far as you get your bookmarks on the side. You get the file system bookmark, which also shows you how much disk space you've currently used up as well. If I right click on a file, of course, you get a standard right click menu that allows you to do things like cut, copy, and, and things like that. You could change the properties. So if you needed to do like a, a CH mod or something to to give this thing executable permissions. Well, you have a permissions tab here and you can see read, write, execute. So you can uh, either just type the number in manually if you know exactly the number code for the permissions or you can just click the button. So if you need, you know, write permission for the group or execute permissions for the owner or whatever it happens to be, you can do that right there from the file manager. So that is very cool. Let me close the file manager out. In the center of the panel, of course, you have your time and date. Clicking on it, you get your standard event calendar that pops down. You have your system tray and your logout menu here on the right. Now, if I hit Super T to bring up a terminal, that's a standard uh, key binding here in elementary OS, Super T opens your terminal. If I did a uname dash R, they are on kernel version 5.15, which is an older kernel, LTS kernel. But uh, again, that elementary OS is not a rolling release distribution. It is designed for stability. So that is why that is the case. And if I do a apt list dash dash installed, let's get a list of all the packages that are installed on elementary line by line. And if I take that output, and run that command again and pipe it into WC, the word count program, space, dash L, for a line count rather than a word count. 1,599 lines of output are in that apt list installed command, which means there's 1,599 packages installed out of the box on elementary OS 7.0. I wonder if HTOP is installed out of the box. It is. Let's go ahead and check uh, CPU and memory usage. So CPU usage is very low. We're using about uh, three, four, five percent of the CPU right now. We're not really doing anything right now, so you wouldn't expect CPU usage to be very high. RAM usage, we're using about 1.1 gig of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this virtual machine. So one gig, that's probably standard for most desktop environments, most GTK based desktop environments these days, such as Gnome and Cinnamon and Budgie, they typically all run on about one gig of RAM. 
If I right click on the desktop and I go to change wallpaper, let's check out the wallpapers. Uh, the wallpapers, most of them look like wallpapers I've seen before. I really like the default wallpaper, by the way. I probably wouldn't change it. Probably run that for a while, but most of this other stuff, yeah, I think I have seen all of these wallpapers before. So that one there would probably look good with a light theme. This lighter version of the wallpaper would look better since I'm using a dark theme. Uh, here's one, which is a satellite. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's a pretty cool photograph. Here's one that would really probably pop, especially with a light theme since it's a dark wallpaper. And that one there as well. Yeah, beautiful wallpapers. I think I'm just going to go back to the default for now. Yeah, that's really nice. Overall, Elementary 7.0 is really not that different than Elementary 6. Um, again, it's just some minor tweaks. They're improving, especially some of the theming and accent colors and, and how things respect, especially the change from going from a light mode to a dark mode. That was always an issue in past versions of Elementary, but they're really uh, getting that stuff ironed out. But for the most part, again, small little tweaks, some bug fixes here and there. Really, uh, they, they already had a nice... Uh, a product, right? They were they were already doing things really well, and this is again just kind of pushing a little bit forward in that same direction. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this video, and of course, I'm talking about James, Maxim, Matt, Mehmet, Mitchell, Paul, Royal, Wes, Armor, Dragon, Bash, Potato, Chuck, Commander, Angry, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace Arch, and Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Profit, Roland, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Elementary OS 7.0 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Elementary is kind of like Mac OS if Mac OS was good.